Hi, uh, Graham and Pauline here from Hunters. We're just doing another vlog just to update landlords uh, on the fast moving legislation that's uh, coming into the rental markets. Now, this one is about um, particularly aimed at Scottish landlords because we are talking about, off my crib sheet, the Cost of Living uh, Act 2022, and it's designed to, to protect tenants um, from, well, big rent increases. Um, it may come into England this, so if you're an English landlord worth watching, but we're talking specifically about Scotland here. So three main things. One bit of legislation means landlords cannot increase their rentals with existing tenants. A second change is that um, uh, in exceptional circumstances, if a landlord has to change rental values, uh, Scottish ministers will decide uh, what they can do and what they can't. And the third thing is about restrictions on uh, getting back a property where you may have a difficult tenant. So, uh, Pauline, uh, I'm going to turn to you and just ask you, first of all, is it true that a landlord can now not increase their rents? Uh, yes, if you haven't served the notice before the 6th of September, so anything before the 6th, you can. After that, no, you can't increase the rents. Okay. And um, how long is this for then? For indefinitely or...? Initially, it's six months. So we've got it in place now until the end of March, at which point they will review it again. It's a three monthly review. So it will be reviewed at the end of December, then the end of March, then they'll do it at the end of September 23 and then March 24. So this is all about, and look, we understand this, we're going to see some big increases for people's cost of living, whether the tenants, uh, house owners or landlords. But um, protecting the rights of the tenants, what's that going to do to the landlord? Is the landlord going to have any rights under this to try and increase rents if they have to? Uh, they can under certain circumstances, but there are three very set circumstances on which they can increase their rents. Okay, so what do they relate to? So if they have um, increase in their mortgage payments, if they have increase in their insurance payments or their lease hold payments so if you've got a flat and you've got a lease on it yeah the head lease yeah okay so in certain circumstances if a landlord is facing large increases on the cost of their rental they can try and get some increase in the rent that existing tenant pays yes but it is very uh, restricted okay so on a rent of 500 pounds as our example they are allowed to charge 50% um, of their increase. So if their mortgage increase was £100 additional, yeah. uh, that 50% would obviously be £50. Yeah. Um, but it is limited to 3% of the rent. So we're down to the rent being the mechanism for doing okay. it. So that's £15. So a rental of £500, if a landlord is experiencing difficulties with meeting their costs, they can increase that rent to £515. Yes. As a maximum. Yes. They have and to who, apply decides, for it. who decides who decides how if the rent can be increased? Uh, it is the rent service that makes the decision. So we've got rent officers coming back. We have. Yeah. Okay. Wow. We haven't seen this since the eighties. Anybody who's old enough, as I am, to remember the nineteen eighties will know that the choice of rental stock out in the market in those days was tiny. And part of that was because of rent control. So is this going to be bad for landlords? Let's hope it gets reviewed swiftly and it goes at the end of March because I can see some difficulties for landlords, especially if they've got big rent increase, their big mortgage increases. Yeah, yeah. And obviously they've got the fuel costs increased as well. Of course. Well, look, for us at Hunters here, look, advice is always free. So if you're a landlord and you want to know more about this, do please feel to give us a call. Um, myself, one of the team, will try and tell you what we know. Keep in mind the legislation is only seven days old, so we are finding out a little bit as we go along. But just to give an example, we talked about £500. Typically, um, a normal rent increase on a £500 let would be about £25 because it was tied to the, the retail price index. Yeah? yeah, or the consumer house price index. Yeah, so we would normally say 525 would have been a reasonable rent increase. So if the rent officer, if these new controls say, well, no, you can only move it to 515, 3% increase, it could be that it's going to cost a landlord a maximum of £120 over that 12 months. So it sounds draconian, but it maybe isn't as bad as it first reads. Again, if you've got any concerns, landlord, do get in touch with us. So the other bit here is that a landlord 
cannot gain access and reclaim their property if they have a tenant not paying their rent, for example, uh, uh, within the normal timelines. W what's, what's changed? What, 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 what are the government saying now? Uh, in terms of the rent arrears, there has to be substantial rent arrears before they will consider it. And they are talking about four to six months being substantial arrears. They're not talking about one or two months, which were what we're used to. So once a tenant had not paid their rent for two months, that was deemed permissible to say, look, we can now start taking action to try and recover the property. That could now be six months. Yes. Same as the COVID period. Very much so. Very much so. It, it mirrors it quite well. Okay. Well, fortunately, arrears is quite rare. Um, and I think if we were managing agents and we saw uh, that a landlord was or a tenant was, was, was in arrears and not paying the rent, we would always encourage to get them talking to local authority, trying to seek some financial help, just and as does. we did. And us, of course, just as we did during the COVID period. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. So again, if you're a landlord and you've got any concerns on that, do get in touch with the team. We'll be trying, uh, more than happy to try and help you. There are some other circumstances under which a landlord potentially can get the property back. Is that right? Yes, there is a few. So if a landlord is um, in poverty and they have to sell the property to alleviate the poverty, then they're allowed to do it. That's still permissible. That's still permissible. If the property, uh, the lender is selling the property, so property's been repossessed as such, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. so they're allowed to do it. If the um, in, the tenant was in tied employment, so they lived in the property as part of their, then the um, the employer is allowed to get it back. Leave your employment, leave the company house. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if the landlord needs to return to the property because they're in poverty and to go back to the house, that's permissible. Okay. Uh, if antisocial behaviour, that's another one, mm -hmm. or criminal. Criminal behaviour. Criminal behaviour. And the final one is... It's hot off the press, this, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, know, I can't remember. <laughs> uh, if it's been abandoned by the tenant. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so okay. if the tenant's abandoned it, then okay. the landlord's still allowed to retrieve right. it. Well, I've got the benefit of reading from my notes here. So look, it's only just come in this legislation. It sounds bad. We've got rent officers back. We know what, caused, uh, what problems it caused when we had rent controls back in the 80s. But we just gave that example, typical £500 rent with a tenant in place. We would probably be increasing rent to 525 As long as the rent officers are in agreement, it looks like we can increase to 515 It's not as draconian as it may sound. If you're a landlord, you've got any questions, you want to know anything about this or anything to do with renting out your property, do get in touch with us here at Hunters. We'll keep vlogging as these legislation changes come out um, and we'll be glad to try and help you.